Everybody. Welcome to today's edition of STEM Pro Live. My name is Marlis and I am the Administrator of Marketing and Communications with the Maricopa County Education Service Agency and also your host of STEM Pro Live. I'm so excited you were able to join us today because we have a special guest um, for this STEM Pro Live. If you've watched STEM Pro Live before, you know that we have a whole variety of STEM professionals that we've focused on before. Um, and today we're going to talk with uh, someone who's in a position that um, you may experience most days of the week and not even realize is a STEM career. So I'm here with Heather Livingood, a teacher at Washington High School. Um, so Heather, tell us a little bit about what your job is. What, what all classes do you teach here at Washington? I teach two different sections. I teach uh, mainly sophomores, biology, mm -hmm. and then I teach juniors and seniors human anatomy, which here we call human science, and we focus on learning the body systems, the organs, and also diseases that affect those body systems. Mm -hmm. And I understand you didn't originally growing up want to be a teacher, so how you were first interested in STEM. So how did you get interested in science at a younger age, and then how did that lead to what you're doing today? I've always been interested in science. Um, in the lower grades, when you do experiments, like seeing a volcano erupt, or other types of experiments. I've been interested in learning how things work or why things are the way that they are. And as I grew, my love of science grew with me. And when I went into college, I originally was interested in the healthcare profession. I wanted to be a nurse, and that involved biological sciences, which is my favorite science. Um, after doing some time in the medical field, I decided that that really wasn't the path for me. It wasn't really bringing me the type of satisfaction that I wanted. So I did a little bit of soul searching. I shadowed a couple different careers, and I found that I really, really enjoy being in the classroom and helping other students develop their love for science. Awesome. Um, and. How, how, do you, how do you help students develop that love for science? Like, What's your uh, goal or vision for your classroom? What do you hope students take away from your classes? I hope that they take away, at the very, very least, knowledge of how the world works around them. And it's always a very, very rewarding for me at the end of the school year for students to say, I've never really been interested in science. I've never really been good at science, but you made me really interested in science. And now I want to be a chemist or I want to be a biologist. I want to work as a nurse. So that's always very, very rewarding. Awesome. Um, and how do you stay up to date? Because STEM, science, technology, engineering, math, clearly there are some areas that are still um, research is still being done, ideas are still developing. How do you stay up to date um, with new STEM findings or new ways to teach as well? Absolutely. Science is constantly evolving. It's always changing. There's always new findings and that's really what keeps science fun. Mm -hmm. I do a couple of things. There's of course professional developments. There's workshops hosted both by the district but also within the community different organizations such as the colleges, um, electrical and water companies, SRP mm -hmm. and APS. They host a lot of different workshops, not just for teachers but for students as well, so that we can stay up to date on all the new findings and all the new trends and all the new information. Um, also as a class, we like to do current events and look at that new research and kind of fold it into what we're learning. Very cool. And you've touched on this a little bit already, but what really makes you uh, love being a science teacher? The thing that I love most is the hands-on part of it. Um, sometimes the lecture and the worksheets and those types of things can get a little bit dull, but when you're able to take that information, that knowledge, and apply it to an experiment and get your own results and really get your hands on the equipment and in the science mm -hmm. and experience it for yourself, that's always the best part. Yeah, it's that hands-on, real-life kind of exploration, taking on the role of a what a professional scientist would do. Yeah. Absolutely, and yeah. taking something that you read about and actually seeing it in real life so that you can make that connection. These aren't things that just happen in a textbook. They happen in the world around us every single day. Yeah. 
That's awesome. Um, and talking about what it means to be a teacher, students watching, clearly you all have teachers and you see a chunk of what their work is, but what all goes into being a teacher that maybe students don't know about or they don't see because they just have you for the hour, 45 minutes, whatever it is, um, several days a week? Teachers put in a lot of work behind the scenes, so every single day we have to have a lesson prepared and usually we plan that well out in advance because we want everything to flow very nicely. So there's a lot of lesson planning, getting materials together, checking and making sure what we're teaching is aligned to the state objectives. Mm -hmm. There's also a lot of meetings, a lot of administrative things that go on behind the scenes. Um, lots of workshops, talking with uh, parents and conferencing with students and it's really a collaboration with the entire school. Mm -hmm. We collaborate with other teachers to make sure that we're meeting the needs of our students because every single student learns differently. Mm -hmm. So you really have to tailor what your lesson plan is so that you're best meeting the needs of everybody. Yeah, it's very individualized. Very, yeah, very work. individualized, yes. Fantastic. Um, and what do you say to students who are watching who are maybe a little bit interested in, oh, maybe science teaching is something I might want to pursue, but um, science is so hard to learn, maybe there are those students, or um, others who think that, well, teaching seems um, you know, too difficult for me. I don't know. What, what advice would you have for those students watching about persisting in those areas? I would advise first to make sure that you have a strong love of science because that's where I started. My passion for science is strong. Um, it makes me excited to come in and be able to pass that knowledge on and give that excitement to other people. There are, just like teachers go to workshops, there's workshops for students as well. So there's workshops that I've gone to that I've then had the opportunity to invite my students to attend either over the summer break or during school hours. And they can really get a hands-on view of different careers in the STEM field so I would recommend branching out and doing those things that are a little um, more hands-on. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. So that's another opportunity. And then I think the other component is making sure that you like to help other people mm -hmm. and pass that knowledge on. There's always opportunities, I'm sure, to TA for a science teacher. Um, at this school, we have a, a peer tutor program where the peer tutor is somebody who's already taken that class. Mm -hmm. And then the following year, they get to help the underclassmen in that same class. So they kind of get to put their teaching hat on for a portion of the class period and um, see if that is the career path that they would like. Yeah, very cool. And we should include also, what did you study in college to become a teacher? Do you, um, yeah, for, for students who aren't aware of, of kind of what, um, to maybe look at in colleges as far as programs to become a science teacher or any other kind of teacher, I guess. There are a few different paths. I took an alternate path to certification. So my first degree is in biological sciences. That is my love, that is my passion. Um, but like I said, I decided after I got my bachelor's degree that I wanted to kind of go another route. And I went back and got my master's degree in secondary education and then um, so you could either get a, a bachelor's degree in education mm -hmm. or you can get a master's degree. Mm -hmm. There are also state certifications um, and certifying tests that you would have to pay for and study for and take those tests to become certified um, as well as other licensing. Sure, okay. And usually whatever education program you decide to go through, your counselor will help you walk through mm -hmm. those steps to make sure that you become fully certified and have mm -hmm. all the credentials that you would need. Right, lots of support there, definitely not on your own on that end. All right, so now it's time to transition over to our live question and answer uh, using the questions that you have all been sending in um, and hopefully will continue to send in. Uh, so we'll go ahead and start that right now. Hey everybody, so now it's time to transition into our question and answer portion. You've got a whole slew of great questions coming in so far. So we're going to start with some of the background uh, questions for you, Heather, or uh, Ms. Livingood. Um, so first off, where, where did you go to college to pursue your degree? Uh, for my bachelor's degree, I went to Northern Arizona University, go Jacks, and um, I got my bachelor's degree there. It's a four-year degree. 
some people take a little bit longer, some people can finish a little bit sooner, so it just depends on um, what your schedule looks like. And then my master's degree I got at uh, University of Phoenix, Master's of Education in Secondary Ed. Oh, fantastic. Um, and what is your, we've got a few questions about uh, favorite lessons, favorite subjects to connect science with, and you already talked a little bit about uh, bioscience is your favorite kind of focus area, that's right. Um, do you have, are there particular projects or experiments um, or other things like that that you really love to introduce to kids, students that you get really excited about every year? I think microscope labs are always very fun to kind of see cells on a microscopic level, look at plant cells versus animal cells or prokaryotes versus eukaryotes. Very cool. Um, and do you have a science hero? Is there somebody you've always looked up to? Those favorite questions are always so hard for me. Yeah. You know, I would say science is not an, an individual uh, learning category. It really takes collaboration from a lot of different people. So I would say anybody who was brave enough to start pursuing things that nobody else believed, um, taking on that burden and really trying to prove what either their theory or their hypothesis, um, especially uh, women in science, because mm -hmm. there's kind of a, a little bit of a lack there in mm -hmm. science, of women in science and math and engineering. Absolutely, there is. Um, and related to that, um, Washington High School is a larger high school. Are there other science teachers here, other bioscience teachers? And then what's your relationship like with them? Are you kind of a team or is it more individual work or, or how does that work? There are three other teachers here who teach biology. Um, we also teach an introductory science, chemistry, physics, um, environmental science, um, human anatomy. So there's lots and lots of science teachers on campus and specifically the teachers who teach biology, we meet on a regular basis, we collaborate, we share our projects and our lessons, and we also share our data, how our students are learning. What did we do that helped our students to become successful or what interventions could we put in place as a whole to make sure that the students who are graduating from Washington High School are going to be able to compete both at a state level and a national level. Very cool. Um, we've got a couple questions about some of the items in your classroom. So we'll mm -hmm. just start off uh, with some of the earlier ones. What is the coolest piece of science equipment you have in your class, if there is something that you think really stands out? The coolest thing that I, I have in my classroom, I actually got um, funded from Donors Choose, mm -hmm. where people in the community choose to fund certain projects so that in the classroom we can have those materials. And we actually got a digital microscope, oh. which is very, very nice. You plug it into the computer, and what you would usually see when you look through the eyepiece of the microscope is then projected onto the computer, and then we can even project that onto the smart board. It's really, really cool, especially to look at live cell samples. Yeah, so you get to see it even more detail, in even more detail than right, and everybody gets to look at it at the same Absolutely. time. Absolutely, we can all look at the same thing, especially um, if we're just learning mm -hmm. the parts of the cell. It's much easier for me to point out and show everybody what we're looking at in the microscope. Yeah. Awesome, very, very cool. Um, and then along with, um, yeah, some items in uh, the classroom, we did have a question. Do you have any live plants or animals in this classroom? I do not have any <laughs> live plants or animals. Mm -hmm. um, towards the end of the school year, we do make biomes where we kind of have enclosed ecosystems. Mm -hmm. um, and I do have a Sonoran desert tortoise, but he lives in the school garden. So um, I think it would be mean to keep him cooped up wow. in the classroom. He likes to be outside. That's really cool. Is he, he's just on his own? He never escapes? <laughs> or? Well, the community garden is enclosed. Gotcha. And he has his own enclosure within the garden. And we've built him a burrow. And so he's actually hibernating right now because it's too cold for him yeah. to be out. So that's kind of our that's classroom super cool. pet. That's super, yeah. super cool. Nice. Related to that, we had a class, um, a student, I assume, in a class saying, um, would you touch a snake? Because their teacher won't. <laughs> <laughs> a 
Oh, I never went to. You went there. That's okay. I, I do not have any um, desire to touch a snake. Okay, good answer. That is just fine. Um, do you do any dissections in your class? And which which do you or students seem to prefer the best or the most? I always get a dissection question. Um, Dissection is not part of the Arizona State Standards, so in biology okay. we do not dissect. Okay. However, I also teach human anatomy, mm -hmm. and in human anatomy we do do dissections, and probably the big dissection that everybody likes to do is the end of the year practicum, which is a fetal pig. Oh, wow. Mm -hmm. Very cool. Um, and then we had a couple of questions, and these might um, occur more for physics or chemistry classes, but has anything ever exploded? Um, or have you ever set off the fire alarm with an experiment? <laughs> as a teacher, no. As a student, yes. Oh, really? As a student? Yes. In uh, my college chemistry lab, I did manage to accidentally set my lab report on fire <gasps> oh, because no. I put it too close to the Bunsen burner. And I also did manage to break quite a few uh, beakers and cylinders and pipettes, so I kind of had a bill at oh, the end wow. of the school year that I had to cool. pay the lab equipment room for all the equipment oh, I broke. No. Oh no, but that just goes to show <laughs> that you can make some mistakes when you're learning as a student. Things happen sometimes, um, accidents happen, but you can become a brilliant science teacher after <laughs> it all. Fantastic. Um, let's see what other questions we have going on. Oh, we did have someone asking, um, what, what are the displays behind us right here? Do you want to talk a little bit about what's going on in the posters behind us and then how you choose the posters on your walls? Absolutely. All of these posters that are around my room are student created. At the end of the school year, I have them create a visual aid to go along with the lesson that we've learned this year. And then they also give a presentation on that, um, that I have a rubric that they have to follow. And it's kind of uh, competitive because I only pick the top 10 to 12 posters out of all my students to display for the remainder of the year mm -hmm. and the following school year. Very cool. So they kind of turn over with, yeah, with time. Um, do you ever have guest speakers come to your class? I try to have guest speakers come, but it's not always something that fits into the schedule. Sure. Luckily, we do have a career center here, and the school gets very, very involved in really exposing students to a lot of different career options and opportunities in the community. Very cool. Uh, and then we had a question that came in um, about, are there other jobs that you've kind of been interested in um, pursuing? And I know you talked about in college um, that you started out being interested in nursing. Mm -hmm. um, but then what has kept you being a teacher? And then maybe specifically, what has kept you here at Washington High School? Because you've been here for uh, quite a while. Mm -hmm. Honestly, I ask myself, if I wasn't a teacher, what else would I enjoy doing? Mm -hmm. What else could I see myself doing? And that vision just doesn't come through for me. I always imagine myself as a teacher. It's, it's my calling. It's what calls to me. It's what makes me happy. I wake up in the morning, and the first thing I think about is, oh, we're going to do this today, and we're going to do that today, and I want to make sure I tell my students about this cool thing that I read online. So I really don't envision myself doing anything else for the time being. Mm -hmm. And what was the second part of the question? Um, just asking about, um, yeah, then what has kept you here specifically at Washington High School? What do you enjoy about this particular community? Well, the first thing I enjoy is, of course, my students. Mm -hmm. They um, are so funny. Mm -hmm. They are so bright. And they make me laugh every single day. It's, it's never the same thing. Um, even though I teach the same class throughout the day, it's always something new. Mm -hmm. And I really enjoy Washington High School as a whole. It's not just a school. It's not just my job. I don't just clock in at 7.30 and clock out at 3.30. It's a family, and we're the Rams here, so we call ourselves a Ramily. Nice. So it's a, it's a really tight community, and you really become you know, friends with your coworkers, mm -hmm. and being able to see my students go from uh, you know, little freshmen who don't really have any clue about what lies ahead of them. Yeah. At the end of the year, I see my seniors graduating and they're going on to college and different um, career paths and they just have all this opportunity ahead of them. Yeah. So that's always fun to see. Fantastic. Um, and of course, for a lot of the students watching, they may be thinking about, oh, one of the benefits of being a teacher is 
you get summers off. Um, so you want to talk a little bit about what you actually do during your summers as a teacher? You do have the option to have summers off. Um, I tell myself every single year, I'm going to take this summer off, I'm going to lay by the pool, I'm going to have a vacation. I always end up working mm -hmm. um, and it's usually with students. Mm -hmm. So for example, last year I did a summer bridge program where we had um, incoming um, freshmen, so they were just finishing up their eighth grade year and they were going to come to the school the following year to be ninth graders and we did um, a program where we merged science and literature oh, and so we spent cool. the summer kind of looking at those two pieces and how they relate to one another and yeah. um, doing different projects. Yeah, and so it's probably fun for you too because you got to work mm -hmm. in a slightly different area than the classes you're teaching during the regular set school year. So Absolutely, cool. it was a blast. Awesome. Um, and what are, um, we often yeah, get a question about some of the challenges um, you face in your work and overcoming those. So what are some challenges to being um, a teacher, to being a science teacher in particular, and then how do you deal with those or, or overcome those? I would say one challenge that I think all teachers face is time management. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of what students see is just what you do inside the classroom. Yep. And that's really, I would say, the easy part of teaching. Mm -hmm. um, there's so much more that happens outside of the classroom. Sometimes it's a 10 hour work day. I come in in the morning, I'm tutoring students before school, I teach all my sections and then after school I have more tutoring and extracurricular activities and then on top of that there's grading and lesson plans and meetings and it, it can be very demanding and you really have to know how to budget your time mm -hmm. because at the end of the day if you stress yourself out you're not going to be as good of a teacher to your students as, as they deserve. Sure, sure. Great. Um, awesome. I think we've answered all the questions that have come in, um, unless there are any last minute that uh, people want to send in right now. But thank you so much, Heather, for being with us. Um, was there anything else you wanted to share with students watching who maybe are thinking about becoming a science teacher or either going into some other science profession or teaching or some combination of the two? Absolutely. I would say if you have a love for science, pursue it. Um, if you're not sure, if you're on the fence, see if there's somebody who you can shadow, if you could be a TA, um, perhaps a summer internship, Great even ideas. look out into the community and see if there's summer programs or student workshops mm -hmm. so that you can really get that hands-on experience and see what it's actually like. Awesome. Great ideas, great suggestions there to take what you're learning in the classroom and connecting it to your future. So thank you again, Heather, for being with us today. Thank you, students and teachers, so much for joining us for today's broadcast. And watch your email for information on upcoming editions of STEM Pro Live.